Hey, what's going on guys? This is Tyler, Pharmacist with Pharmacy Update. First off, I just want to say I hope everyone is staying safe during these trying times. This is a difficult time for our country and the world right now, and my thoughts and prayers go out to anyone affected by this terrible disease. It does appear so far that the numbers are coming in below the models that predict a number of cases, deaths, hospitalizations, etc. So that is a positive sign. However, don't think we're out of the woods yet. There is still pain to come. I would just ask everyone to continue the social distancing and hygiene practices that we currently have in place. These practices are really helping to flatten the curve and keeping our hospital capacity at or below where it needs to be. So just keep up the good work. With all that being said, I wanted to alert you guys today to something that has kind of gone under the radar, in my opinion, and that is the recent announcement from the FDA calling for all companies that make ranitidine or Zantac to recall their products. As you may know, many ranitidine and Zantac products were recalled last year due to the detection of an impurity. However, since then, many of these products have become available again, as the FDA found that certain ranitidine samples did not contain the level of impurity that is over the acceptable level. But then, on April 1st of this year, they reversed course once again, and now this product can no longer be prescribed or purchased in the United States. So without further ado, let's get into some more details about this recall. On April 1st of 2020, the FDA came out with a statement requesting that all ranitidine and Zantac be removed from the market due to the results of some new studies that they conducted. The impurity that they have found in these medications is NDMA, and we'll discuss that more on a later slide. But what the FDA found in some recent studies is that the levels of NDMA increase in ranitidine over time. Especially when these products are stored at a higher temperature, the NDMA can really go up. Then, if these medications are ingested for a long period of time, it can increase a person's risk of cancer, as NDMA is a probable human carcinogen. Due to these disturbing findings, the FDA has essentially made it impossible to obtain this product now, while other countries around the world and the EU have not made a decision yet regarding ranitidine and Zantac. Janet Woodcock, who is a director of the FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, made a statement in the announcement. She basically said that some of the samples of ranitidine that they tested did not contain NDMA levels above the acceptable level. This is one of the reasons that ranitidine was not completely pulled off the market last year. However, since then, they have discovered this issue of more NDMA forming over time, and that is what ultimately led to the decision to pull all of these medications from the market. So like I had mentioned earlier, higher temperatures during storage of ranitidine and Zantac did lead to higher levels of the impurity, but the testing also found that samples stored under normal room temperature conditions also form more NDMA over time. And the problem is with the drug itself, as it metabolizes, it makes more NDMA. And there has been some studies done by an independent pharmacy that show that when ranitidine is introduced to stomach acid, that interaction also creates more NDMA. Due to all of these studies and new results that they have found, the FDA has sent out letters to manufacturers requesting that they recall all of their products. And you know, I've talked to patients about this product. It really seems to get the job done when it comes to reducing heartburn symptoms. Just from speaking with a few of them, they say that the other products really don't work as well. So I am kind of sad to see this medication go just because it did seem to help people out. Um, I've actually used it myself with good results. But with all this new information, I totally understand why the FDA decided to take this action. And I've already started seeing ads on TV from law firms regarding suing the manufacturers of these products if a person did develop cancer while taking it. Very quickly, I want to cover the defect that they have found in these products, and that is NDMA. You might be surprised to find out that this toxic substance is found in many common foods, some of those being cured meat, fish, beer, and also in tobacco smoke. So there is an acceptable level of MDMA that you can take per day, uh, but these products contain levels that are above that acceptable level. 
As we discussed, it is classified by the EPA as a probable human carcinogen, which again means that it probably does cause cancer, especially if taken at higher doses for a long period of time. There has not been any studies done in humans for obvious reasons, but they have done some studies using animals to study its toxicity. In these animal studies, it has been found to be very toxic, and it is especially toxic to the liver. They also found that rats exposed to low levels of NDMA for a long period of time did develop cancerous tumors in the liver, so this substance is definitely not something that you want to take in doses higher than the acceptable level. Next topic I want to cover here is how to dispose of any ranitidine or Zantac that you might have. Normally the best way to do this is to find a drug take back location. These are normally a sheriff's office or maybe a pharmacy in your area. However, with the current social distancing orders in place, this really isn't the best option at this time. And ranitidine is currently not on the FDA flush list either. So at this moment, the best way to get rid of your ranitidine is to follow this graphic here provided by the FDA. First thing you want to do is find a substance that is not edible. This would include things like dirt or coffee grounds. Mix up your medication and the substance and place it in a bag of some sort. Then you will just want to throw it away in the trash. Currently, this would be the best way to get rid of ranitidine. And that brings me to my final topic of the day. What are some possible alternative treatments for heartburn if you were taking ranitidine? You always want to speak with your doctor first before taking any new medication, but here are some possible options. Famotidine and cimetidine. The nice thing about these two medications are they are in the same drug class as ranitidine. Uh, the histamine 2 receptor antagonists. So in theory, their effects should be about the same. Like ranitidine, they do work fairly quickly and they do a pretty good job for on-demand heartburn treatments. I do have a separate video on famotidine. Now between these two medications, I personally prefer famotidine just because it does seem like cimetidine has more side effects and drug interactions when compared to famotidine. Both of these are available over the counter to purchase. However, I know for my pharmacy anyway, we are having issues getting in famotidine right now from our supplier, and that is likely due to the high demand. Now, back during the first round of ranitidine recalls, I recommended this to many of my patients to try famotidine due to being in the same drug class and no evidence of a cancer risk. And I talked with many of them, and the story I got much of the time is that it just doesn't work quite as well compared to Zantac. Many of them said that it did help, but they were still having issues with heartburn that they didn't really have when they took ranitidine. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for other options. The other possible treatments is PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. So this would include drugs such as omeprazole, pantoprazole, and esomeprazole or Nexium. Like the other medications, these can be purchased over the counter. Now this is a totally different drug class, so it's going to work a little differently. PPIs do work well, but they can take longer to work. And really to get the full effect of the medication, it needs to be taken on a daily basis. Much information has come out fairly recently about PPIs and long-term side effects. Some of these include an increased risk of bone fractures, low magnesium levels, and dementia. So it's almost like a pick your poison situation. I do have a video on omeprazole that goes over all the possible long-term side effects along with some other information. I'll also leave a link for that video if you want to check it out. Well, that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you felt that it was helpful or informative, please give the video a thumbs up. Along with my links to my other videos, I will also leave a link to the official FDA press release on ranitidine and Zantac if you wanted to take a look at that. Also, I always love to hear from you guys and your stories. Were you affected by this recall? Did you try another medication for your heartburn? Just leave a comment below. Also, if you'd like to see more videos such as this one, please subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you guys again and have a nice day.